Okay, so I want to do a video. I haven't talked about it in a while, and it's a tool I use week in, week out in the shop, and that is my homemade with the Swag Off-Road 50-inch finger brake press. I will say, if you are getting into press brake stuff, it's uh, a very good bang for the buck. I built mine out of C-channel um, that I, I welded like the back from the back of a five inch C-channel, made a little frame, excuse the mess. Um, this is quarter inch plate. My big concern when building it was bending the frame. Um, same thing up top, bending the frame. So it's quarter inch plate here, front and back, quarter inch plate here, front and back with I-beam um, here um, and here, okay? Now, the biggest regret I have when I built this, I will say I have two actual regrets. One is an actual regret, and two is I wish I would have just um, had the extra money to go a little bit better on the build. But the one thing, because I built it and I didn't um, think about or worry about is this piece right here. It flexes. So, and what I mean when it flexes is um, you can get um, odd degrees. So like you could be, say you're burning, bending to 90, you could be 94 degrees here and 88 degrees here, um, you know. So alignment and flex has been an issue since I bought it, but I mean, we're dialing it in. These are some 3 16 uh, stake pockets that I bend for my flatbeds. Um, and I just bent, oh gosh, how many did I just bend? Six, 12 of them oh, in probably a half hour. Um, but if I were to rebuild this thing and um, I have honestly thought about selling this one and just building another one there we go little jam up because it's not bad and i like the for under like i don't think i have 2500 bucks into this thing i like that i can get um uh four feet of a quarter inch bend um that that's huge for me for what i do um what I wish I would have done was I wish I would have just skipped going with the air over hydraulic rams. I wish I would have done um, hydraulic fluid rams instead. How I would have done it, if I were to build it, if you're thinking about building one, I would have taken inch and a half plate and I would have welded it to the top of this plate, probably six inches tall. Okay. Um, just to take some of the flex out of this bottom plate. And then the next thing I would have done was I would have just plasma cut um, and welded connectors on and just done two um, hydraulic fluid rams, one on either side, maybe even one like, not necessarily right on the end, but about a the third or of the way in on each side. And then just done that. The hydraulic rams, I think, um, would be stronger. I think they would be faster. And um, I think I think it would have been overall better. Frame-wise, I probably would keep close to the same frame because I actually, I have really, really liked it. Um, I haven't had any issues with like the bottom die tweaking or moving or anything. That's been really, really solid. My only problems seem to be in the top and I don't have enough room without cutting the whole top of this thing off to put um, uh, some inch and a half by six inch flat stock in there and uh, to reinforce it. Um, but 
like all things considered, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It has saved me. Like these are things I used to just buy like um, square tubing and weld it on. And I thought it always kind of looked bad. And I just, I was not happy with how it turned out every time. Um, if you buy these, I think you can buy them in sets of like four for 30 bucks. Um, this flatbed alone is getting 12. So that's an extra hundred bucks on the, um, for every flatbed I build. So that's a hundred bucks that I have to factor into my beds to stay competitive. When making these in house, um, I can make 12 of them probably cut, broke and bent in easily 45 minutes. Um, 20 minutes if I had an extra person helping me that day. And, um, you know, and the material, it's probably less than $10 um, because it, it doesn't, they don't take up a lot of room to cut out or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so being able to do that, it helps me stay competitive on actually building them, on building the beds and everything. And uh, I like it. Now, the other thing is, um, I make a lot of small parts. So I have been looking at just like three foot CNC brakes because I make a lot of small parts. It would also be nice to have a eight foot brake. I don't actually know anywhere. I think the closest guy I know that I could outsource braking to, um, when it's over four feet is like an hour and a half away. So, and I don't really do hardly any business with them. So it would cost a lot more. Um, so I'm not like, it's just a hassle. Cause it's like either he has to get my material and then I'm paying his material prices and, or I have to drop it off. It just, it doesn't seem to work. Um, but I would love a 10 foot break. Uh, it's probably not going to be any time in the future, but I would like one. Um, and I have, so that was going to be my last thing. I have thought about buying two sets of these and kind of just doing it as like a total, let's see what happens build. Buying two sets of these, welding them together and then doing one solid strip over the top and welding it all together so that I have a hundred inch break. Um, and then that I could build just like this. Cause again, it's not every day that I need to do it, but like sometimes it's really nice. Um, so I've been thinking about it. And if that's something you guys would be interested in, I mean, we could kind of start saving some money for it. The build would probably cost six, $7,000. But if it was something that actually generated a lot of interest, I'd be willing to try it because if you could do it, um, even for like swag off road, I think that would be like a huge, if we could do it, build it and send prints out, I think it would be really, really big for them. Cause then other guys can mimic them. And, uh, and it just kind of helps break that next threshold. Now, is it going to be the same quality as a, a eight foot CNC press break? No, uh, it's not. And I've seen guys put like limit switches on these that are adjustable. So you can, you know, kind of set it up for repeat bends because that's that's another good thing using the angle finder isn't terrible um because the air rams are slower but if i switched it to hydraulic they'd be much faster so i'd probably want to look into that which i think we could do i think we could build them easy enough i mean the limit switches even for my plasma table are like pretty easy to figure out so i think we could i think we could figure it out um so let me know if that's interesting but I just wanted to kind of do an overview because I think a lot of guys just think it sits here and I never get use it um, because it's got stuff piled on it. And it's it's not true. I just set all my breaking up for one day. So just one day I clear it off and then it gets piled with stuff again. We've got too many projects going on right now. You know, we're trying to finish hanging and finishing our shop. So we've got drywall stacked here. We're saving uh, money for a enclosed trailer so all of our can like construction tools can just live in the enclosed trailer but right now they're constantly getting loaded and unloaded um and yeah and then we've got you know 
same thing like I do my plasma cutting um, generally generally I have a day of plasma cutting and sheet breaking so then I have a you know a week or two weeks worth of plasma cut parts just laying around um, it's just kind of how I do things to get things moving along but um, sometimes it's uh, it's a bit of a struggle so this would be my one year I believe review on my um, swag off-road 50 inch finger brake I have probably bent I would easily say over 500 parts with it in the past year I'd easily say that I mean 40 flatbeds we did last year and you know generally they get um, you know at least 10 um, of these so for, that's 400 parts right there so we might even be over a thousand because then there's all the like smokers I build and all that kind of stuff so um, which is good I think that's uh, that's good that's what you want uh, you don't want to have a tool sitting around that you've never used like my uh, Kalamazoo bandsaw um, I got that almost a year ago and it has just sat in the shop ever since with stuff piled on it because I haven't bought blades for it yet but the Hercules bandsaw kind of got me on the bandsaw wagon. So we're going to next time, I, if I can remember to see what size I need and then uh, put them on, we'll start using it more regular because it, it would be nice. It would be really nice. Um, but yeah, so anyways, guys, don't forget, um, we have a corded Hercules corded bandsaw giveaway coming up in about a month or a month and a day. So, um, all you have to do is find the video on my page that says win a free bandsaw. There's a keyword that you have to put in the comment section of that video. And then you have to be subscribed to my channel. And on my birthday, December 7th, we will draw to see who wins the, um, Hercules corded bandsaw. You're getting the bandsaw, you're getting blades. Um, you're going to get some merch. About a 250 to 300 dollar value. I cover shipping anywhere in the lower 48. Um, and if you're in Alaska, Hawaii, or a different country, we'll work with you. So, okay, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next one.